Hello, I'm Kelly Cho Carey. I'm the editor of a new and exciting concept for engaging with the African story as portrayed in literature, documentaries, photography, and other art forms. And we're calling it the palm print. Starting with literature, our aim is to release it from the shackles of the classroom, make it less stuffy, something more trendy to talk about, like a conversation starter among friends, something that helps us understand our identities better, that helps non-Africans understand and appreciate us better. Literature is a fantastic culture ambassador, and we have to start using it that way. One of the things we're introducing to get the conversation started is a living room series. We're having some friends over to talk about Chimamanda Adichie's Half of the Yellow Sun. This will be the first of many conversations to come. So please join us. The book overall was my first foray into African literature. Okay. So I mean, taking a step back from the whole fact that it's set in the war. Um, I had grown up reading the classics. I've always been an avid reader. So I grew up reading the classics. I love Charles Dickens. And then when I got older, you know, in, in high school, you have to read the Catcher in the Rye and, you know, yeah. To Kill a Mockingbird and all mm -hmm. those those very oh. European <laughs> books. But, you know, I, but I still enjoyed it because there's a story behind it. Yeah. And, you know, if it wasn't a good story on some level, we wouldn't still be reading it so long, you know, past its mm, published say about that, but <laughs> <laughs> um, So in college, I got exposed to black American literature. Um, Eric Jerome Dickey, um, all of those authors. I was like, oh wow, this is so much more colorful. That's only what I could think yeah. to describe yeah. Yeah. what I was reading. But I knew I loved it because I felt something with it. Like when, when it was described, the way in which it was described, I could get something from it, you know, that you can't, that I'm sorry, but you just can't get from non-black American Don't be authors. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So, so, so I, you know, I really loved it, and then a friend of mine gave me this book five years ago, and it just blew my mind. I couldn't believe how connected I felt. I have tons of Nigerian friends. I grew up with Nigerians, because um, it's hard to not. Because <laughs> you all are everywhere. We global. Because, yeah, yeah. We're like we're like the new Chinese. <laughs> New, you want to yeah, so. <laughs> make it happy? They go to the North Pole, they're Nigerian. Yes. And I'm, I, the evil South man Pole. in Antarctica, he has the convenience shop in Antarctica. Exactly, he's selling ice. The only man in Antarctica with a convenience and shop is the evil man. Exactly. <laughs> the thing that I think bothered me, I think that about the reaction from the book and the previous narrative before the book was that people feel like half of the, the Afrin War. Was the, for a long time it was the Igbo story. It was what happened to the Igbos. It yeah. didn't happen to the rest of Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. It happened to us. Yeah. It was our pain. It was our genocide that the world refused to recognize. Yeah. You know, it was for us. But in in actual reality, Biafra was Nigeria's it was story. Nigeria story. It changed yeah. the complete trajectory of the, the way Nigeria moved yeah. forward as a nation. Yeah. Yeah. People refused to acknowledge that, and that's where the uncomfortability yeah. begins. Yeah. Chino Ch Achebe says that it yeah. set Nigeria back. A, a At least years. a decade. Wow. Yeah. 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 And I think that that's, that's where the problem for me is. So when every single story about war is about everybody. Right. Because it could happen, th that it's war because it happened to you. Yeah. When I read Eli Wiesel's Night about the Holocaust, mm -hmm. that changed, that book changed my life because I felt like that could have happened to me. Yeah. If they're coming for everybody who's a Jew, why can't they come from everybody who's black, who's right. Igbo? Mm -hmm. Every single story about war is about everybody. Yeah. So the, the isolationist like thing we've put on half of the Yellowstone and the Biafran War is still replicated in our culture where people still feel like that's for the Igbos. That happened to them. There's yeah. still that like idea in Nigeria, like they're the ones that are still bitter about the war. When in actual reality it's everybody's story. I didn't even know there was a Biafra war in Nigeria. Yes, yeah. I, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I had no idea there was a war or Nigeria ever went through a civil war because growing up in Liberia, we went through a civil war. Yeah. And it's some reading the boy something similar to what we went through. There was a coup d'etat. 
yeah. though at that time you know was over uh, overthrown by Chancellor and his group you know and we never thought living in the capital Morovia the war would trickle down we're yeah. always comfortable mm -hmm. about it you know yeah. we heard that there's something going on out in the north and we're like okay the government will take care of it you know but when you really hit home and really close in front of the door where we live then we knew oh, there's going to be really, really something, happening, you know, something yeah. happening there going through the